What's going on guys, it's Brazil here, back with another video, and today we're going to do a review of a mock draft that one of my subscribers did, Giants for Life, shout out to you, he's, he's always commenting on my videos and everything, and he gave me this idea to go ahead and review mock drafts, and I'm going to go ahead and review his mock draft. So first pick he had was uh, Jacksonville getting Trevor Lawrence, obvious, uh, yeah, Trevor Lawrence is by far the number one draft pick in this class. Number two is Zach Wilson. Yes, I like that pick. I like Zach Wilson to New York better than uh, Justin Fields to New York just because I feel like Justin Fields needs a little bit of a better team around him. Uh, because Justin Fields, the offense that they run in Ohio always just has the wide open guys. So what's better than Atlanta for Justin Fields? Because you got Calvin Ridley and Julio. They were like two of the best route runners in the league. Uh, number three is Miami. Uh, Miami's taking Panay Sewell. I like that pick. Panay Sewell is the best tackle in the draft. It's between him and Slater. So go ahead and give him Sewell. Uh, number four, we touched about it. Justin Fields, I like that pick to Atlanta. Give him a year behind Matt Ryan to develop a little bit. And then you got him some weapons for the future. I guess Julio is kind of getting up there in age. But he still should have had like another two or three years in him that are really good. Number five, Cincinnati taking Jamar Chase. I like this. Uh, Jamar Chase is a really good receiver. Uh... He can't. He arguably is the best receiver in the class. Uh, I could I, I could also see them going Rashawn Slater if Panay Sewell is not on the board, just because they need to protect Joe Burrow after the season. Uh, number six is Kyle Pitts. This is kind of questionable because yes, Kyle Pitts is probably like one of the best receiving <laughs> players in the draft, but I don't know if Philly really wants to invest in another tight end. They are still getting rid of Ertz, but they like Dallas Goddard a lot. They could go quarterback here just because Jalen Hurts, he's a solid, he's he's okay. Just, I don't know if he's necessarily going to be the QB of the future. And it's only, they invested a second round pick in him. But you don't have to go quarterback. Uh, if you're going for best receiver available, Kyle Pitts could technically be that too. So it's not a horrible pick, just maybe more like a Devontae Smith or like an elite separator. Uh, number seven, he has Trey Lance. Uh, San Francisco coming up from uh, coming up to take Trey Lance. I like that a lot. Trey Lance is Trey Lance is yeah. He's definitely my QB four in this draft. He's just the only thing about him is he's so raw right now. Like he has the mechanics to be really good. He's a solid bulky runner. Uh, he has a solid arm. Just yeah, yeah. Number seven for Trey Lance. Yeah, go ahead and give him. Uh, number eight is Jeremiah Wusu Karamoa. He is my favorite linebacker in this class. At number eight, it seems kind of like a little bit of a reach, but hell, if you get if Jeremiah Wusu Karamoa plays anything like Luke Kuechly, that's a steal at eight. Just I don't know, like top uh, off-ball linebackers going at like number eight is kind of a reach. Maybe they trade down, get another pick, and take him like round 12, 13. You never know. Uh, number nine is Denver taking Caleb Farley. I like that pick. Caleb Farley is probably he's like one A to Patrick Sertain's one B in this class. Uh, they're both like around the same type of prospect for me, so they're interchangeable. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Dallas taking Rashawn Slater. I love this pick because Dallas needs a freaking molar, a molar. <laughs> uh, just because Tyron Smith's getting up there in age and Leo Collins has been hurt. But yeah, Rashawn Slater, even with at worst, he's playing left guard for the Cowboys this year. Uh, number 11 is the New York Giants, Devontae Smith, amazing pick. Devontae Smith's probably like one of the best receivers in this class. I like him a lot, but I can understand why you people have uh, Waddle and Chase and Pitts ranked above him. But yeah, Giants getting Smith, an elite route runner. He could get separation that the Giants need a lot. Daniel Jones got an arm. He just needs to hit Devontae Smith in stride. <laughs> Uh, number 12, Jalen Waddle to Detroit. I like this if they don't bring back Kenny Galladay. Uh, they brought in Tyrell Williams, but he's definitely not the answer. Uh, but I do like Waddle. Uh, Waddle going to Detroit's a really good pick, and they acquire some more picks. Tread it down. Uh, number 13 is Michael Parsons. He, yeah, he's an edge. He's also, t I, I don't know what Michael Parsons is. He is an edge, but he's also offline, off-ball linebacker. Uh, Chargers... Uh, yeah, they probably could go offensive line. I don't know if edge is necessarily the biggest need for them. It kind of kind of is, but yeah, Michael Parsons to the Chargers. It's an alright pick. 
Uh, number 14, he has Arizona trading up with Minnesota to take Patrick Sertan. I like this because Arizona does not have any corners at all. Uh, they have Byron Murphy, who's solid. Patrick Peterson's kind of washed. Uh, Buda Baker is a really good safety. But yeah, Patrick Sertan, beef up that defense, and then make a run for a title this year. Number 15, he has Mac Jones going to New England. I love this pick. Mac Jones, I feel like just... I don't really like Mac Jones uh, as much as everyone else does, but I feel like the perfect fit for him is New England. So to get him at 15 is pretty solid. Uh, he's more of a second round guy to me, but quarterbacks do go early. So Mac Jones at 15, I'm not mad at it. I like it. Number 16, Alavera Tucker to the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, if there's, I like it kinda, cause they need a they need to build up a line. The line isn't that great. Uh, just their defense was horrendous last year, so maybe an edge would have been good. Uh, Jalen Phillips, next pick, 17. Jalen Phillips is a solid player. Uh, 17 seems a little bit too high to take him. I feel like he's more of like a 20-ish, like mid-20s range player. But Jalen Phillips, Oakland loves to reach for players anyway, so this does make a lot of sense. Uh, no Gregory Rousseau, though. Yeah, I see him down there. Uh, number 18, Miami. Rashad Bateman, not, not bad. I like Bateman. Uh, Miami does need a receiver too, and they got their offensive tackle in number three at Panay Sewell. So Rashad Bateman, best receiver available. Well, between him and Tooney, honestly. Uh, next pick, we got to go ahead. Uh, Washington football team, Christian Dersaw. I like this pick. Uh, if they all five of the quarterbacks that they want are off the board, they didn't trade up. So Christian Dersaw, best player available. Go ahead and build up a line. At least try to protect for whoever you have that quarterback next season. Uh, number 20, J.C. Horn. This is amazing value for Chicago, especially with all the quarterbacks and <laughs> just anyone that they really want to take off the board. J.C. Horn's prop. He's he's a really good corner. I don't, he's up there with Sertain and uh, Caleb Farley. Just, I don't know why his value isn't just as high as them for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, number 21, we got New York Jets trading up to get Quiddy Pay. Yeah, New York Jets trading up to get Quiddy Pay. Uh, yeah, that's alright. Uh, Quiddy Pay is a pretty solid edge rusher, and the Jets do need an edge, so I, I'm not mad at that pick. Uh, I prefer we would have went like a tackle just to protect uh, Dak Wilson, because you got one solid guy in Makai Becton, you gotta build up the rest of that line. Uh, maybe you got him a weapon too, but you can't complain. You still need an edge. You need to build up that defense. Uh, next pick is uh, Kadarius Tooney at 22. This is uh, interesting to say the least for Tennessee. It's because edge is a pretty big need for him, but Gregory Rousseau isn't the best player. Aziz Aljolari is a pretty good player. Uh, but yeah, Kadarius Tooney. Uh, this is a good pick if they let Corey Davis walk. If they let if they let Corey Davis walk, then Kadarius Tooney, yes, this is a good pick. But I don't know. Unless they value him as a really good slot receiver, then it's not really worth it. But yeah, if Corey Davis walks, then this is a good pick. Uh, number 23, he has Indy taking Gregory Rousseau. Uh, that's not bad because they do need an edge, especially since losing out on JJ Watt and everything. Uh, oh yeah, Gregory Rousseau, pretty solid player. Oh, uh, not solid. His tape, he's just so raw right now. Like, all the sacks he did get in, like, what, 2019? They were just, they were, like, he lucked into those sacks. Like, and I understand it was, like, freshman tape, so you can't blame him, really, because he was still learning. But he's still really raw. He has the traits to be a solid player. Just, he's st he needs to touch up on the technique. Right, let me go ahead and fix that song real quick. Uh, next next team, uh, Pittsburgh taking Samuel Cosme. I like it because you need to protect your quarterback. It's Big Ben, so you need to get him as much help as you can get. <laughs> uh, Samuel Cosme, really good tackle from Texas. Uh, uh, they're losing uh, Vera Tucker. Or not Vera Tucker. Uh, Villanueva. So they need a tackle. And Samuel Cosme could help rebuild that team. Because, oh, they're losing Pouncey too. Yeah. Yeah, Steelers offensive line is gonna be garbage soon. <laughs> so yeah, I like that pick. Uh, Jacksonville taking Aziz Aljolari. It's a 
It's not that bad of a pick. Uh, in that case, yeah, you you recovered it right there. So Zisa Ojolari, solid edge rusher. He's probably my number three inside this class. Uh, yeah, Jacksonville needs an edge. Their offense, their defensive line hasn't been that good since 2018 or. 2017, either one. Uh, whenever they had Clyde Campbell and Yannick and Gakwe dominating, uh, and then they have them trading up to 26 and taking Tevin Jenkins. Tevin Jenkins is probably like number three or number four offensive tackle in this class. He's a really solid guy from Oklahoma State, uh, and you would need to protect Trevor Lawrence, which you are doing right here. Uh, number 27, Baltimore taking Trevon uh, Trevon Merrig. He's he's an okay safety. I don't know if he's the best safety in the class. People have him ranked at number one, so I'm, I'll trust other people. If it's a, if it's like a majority of saying he's the best safety in the class, I'll go ahead and rank him as the best safety in the class. I just personally feel like a Richie Grant or I like Washington from TCU also. I'm not saying Trevon Merrick's a bad player. I just like those two guys a little bit more. But yeah, Trevon Merrick at the end of this first round. Safety is a low-key need for Baltimore, especially if all the receivers are gone, like how in this draft it kind of fell. Uh, yeah, but Trevon Merrick, he's an okay player. I'll go ahead and take him if I was Baltimore. Baltimore could definitely work him, too. Baltimore is, a lot, Baltimore is good at developing safeties. Uh, number 28, Christian Bearmore. Uh, he is the best nose tackle or best DT in this class. I like him a lot. Uh... Number 28 to New Orleans is per pretty good, especially since New Orleans doesn't have any money this year to actually pay anyone. So go ahead and be up for your defensive line, and he does fit a lot. Uh, number 29 is Joseph Asai from Texas. He's a really underrated pass rusher in this year's class. Uh, yeah, Green Bay's got a solid pick right here. I feel like they maybe could target a receiver, but I just don't know any receivers left on the board, really. Uh, number 30 is Travis Etienne. Uh, to Buffalo, that's interesting just because they took Zach Moss last year uh, and uh, Devin Singletary the, like either the year or two years before that. Uh, that's not a bad pick. I like ETN. He's my running back one. Uh, there's uh, Harris too from Alabama. He's really good. Uh, they're they're kind of like the corners. Like they're 1A and 1B. But Travis ETN at 30, I don't hate the pick. Just maybe... Like, uh, I feel like Buffalo needs to invest a little bit more on the defense, like uh, the front seven. Because the front seven wasn't that great last year. And also, maybe take a, like, a lineman to protect Josh Allen, too, because you don't want him getting hurt. But I you can't get mad at Travis Etienne. He's probably one of the best skilled players in this draft. Just running back is so devalued now. Uh, number 31, Xavier Collins to Kansas City. A pretty good pick. Kansas City needs some linebacking help. Anthony Hitchens is not the answer, and he's making a lot of money they need to let him walk soon and then number 32 you got Landon Dickerson going to Tampa Bay not bad not bad Landon Dickerson pretty solid the offensive lineman I feel like he's more of a second third round guy but at the end of the first round you can't really complain especially whenever Tampa won the Super Bowl <laughs> uh yeah but protect Brady and there you go like yeah like thank you guys for watching thank you Giants for life for the suggestion and I'm out